Hello, I'm an English person, and that was a clip of Call Unto You, an original song sang by Nana Asteria, produced under VTuber agency Prison Project, the music and positivity powerhouse. As of March the 31st, 2024, Prison Project is ceasing operations, which is a tragedy as there's tremendous talent and potential in Prism that has gone unnoticed by the greater VTuber community. Contrary to speculation from the VTubing community, it doesn't look like it was just a case of Sony Music Entertainment bad. The lead producer of Prison Project, Shogun, who was put into this position by Sony directly, has made a statement indicating it was a mutually agreed upon decision by both VTuber and agency. It is not related to the wider Sony Corporation layoffs. These claims have been confirmed by PRISM agents themselves on stream and in social media. I would like to address, um, there are a lot of rumors going around, so allow me to clear some things up. We are not fired. PRISM is dissolving as a whole. We have gone independent of our own choices. Going independent was a talent decision. The dissolving is completely unrelated to recent layoffs. Um, this is an, an incredibly difficult time for everyone. Um, even if it is the best case scenario for the talents themselves to be able to take their IP. If we take a look at the statement, particularly the part around a mutual agreement, growth and industry trends, it seems most likely that the company was no longer able to give the agents what they wanted to make the contracts worthwhile, and for Sony, it's probably not profitable enough for them to desire a continuation of operations. However, the relations between management, its VTubers and the agency itself are great. While it may just seem like like an agent, just an agency or a corporation to a lot of people, this was everything to me. One thing that I would really like to say is that I have had the most incredible manager since joining Prison Project. I would not have been able to do anything that I've accomplished without her. She's a fantastic person and I'm truly so lucky to have had a manager like her. But I was so happy that everyone in prison was super nice, especially my gen mates. Um, they helped me out a lot, especially Yura. I think I talked about this a lot. Yura made me my overlays and made me a bunch of stuff because I didn't know anything. I didn't know what the hell like I needed. I didn't know I needed all this stuff to debut. I was so confused. I never felt like I wasn't supported. I never felt like I wasn't um, welcomed or that I didn't belong. Not only that, but the agency has even allowed all of its VTubers to keep their identities and the intellectual property received whilst under contract. It's even decided to continue with the provision and advertisement of new outfits for some of its VTubers instead of trying to recoup the costs. Of course I can swim! I'm a master at doggy paddle! A rare and pleasant gesture that allows the talents to continue performing with minimal disruption and it ensures that those dedicated fans do not have to suffer the loss of their Oshis. What Prism Project and its VTubers have been able to accomplish, despite being on the small side of Corpos, is impressive to say the least. It punched way above its weight when it came to music production, the amount of not just individual covers, but original, individual and group music is incredible. The regular day-to-day -day streaming of its VTubers is incredibly chill and cosy while still being interesting and entertaining. The fact Prism's VTubers have put in so much time, effort and work into their creative endeavours despite working 
Full-time or being in full-time education is commendable and worthy of much respect. I think they represent many of the finest aspects of professionalism and artistry in VTubing and it's worth preserving. So let's take a look at what Prism Project was about and why you should support its VTubers as they may or may not continue their activities as independents from the 1st of April 2024. Prism Project is an English language but Japan based VTuber agency. Like most of these Japan based agencies, it adopts a hybrid English, Japan language and content model. Prism is an idol company, similar to Hololive in some respects, but lower down on the idol scale. Its talents are relatively more free, quirky, and in some cases, not quite as safe. Luto Araka. Let's all pray to this man. <sighs> Fucking cunts. May you one day have courage to stop using incognito mode and stop being a fucking pussy. But they're mildly unsay so at worst. It officially debuted the first wave on the 30th of January 2021. The Prism Project members are special agents from the year 2120, which has been sent back to the past to prevent the threat of humans losing interest and passion for others. Their mission is to create a world where all people on Earth can find something they love and feel happiness every single day, and the agency has kept to this spirit for the most part in its VTubers. There's the odd degenerate, but across the board you can tell immediately that positivity and happiness is a big part of their identity. Prison Project has a reputation for being wholesome and chill. I showed you my skizzin booch. Please respond. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wrong timeline. I must be Bitcoin because I keep falling for you. Indeed, if you look at any of their VTubers, their content is often very cozy. Lots of just chatting and Zatsidan and ASMR streams to complement gaming, music and quirky skits. If you believe that chat reflects a streamer, then you wouldn't be surprised to know that Prism Project's fanbase is incredibly wholesome, very well behaved and tight knit, which is good fun. The Discord is quite active too. The founder and CEO of the agency, Yu, nicknamed Captain, explains that he started preparing PRISM in late 2020 after handing over the presidency of his first startup company, after witnessing the influence Japanese anime and games have over people across the world. He was inspired to try creating his own entertainment business. As mentioned before, PRISM began the birthing period in 2020, so there were only a handful of EN VTubing agencies around at the time, Many of the major agencies either hadn't expanded into the US yet, or had only just recently started their first wave. Hololive Myth debuted in September 2020, Niji Sanji EN debuted in May of 2021, V Shoujo in November of 2020, Phase Connect in June 2021. So just before the big explosion of popularity in EN VTubing and the rise of massive independent VTubers like Fillion or Shy Lily, Prism Project debuted four generations in record time. Generation 1 with three talents in January 2021. Generation 2 with two talents in March 2021. Generation 3 with four talents in June 2021. And Generation 4 with four talents in November of 2021. For a total of 13 VTubers in its first year. With the exception of Gen 4, that's a new wave nearly every two months. Ooh, a piece of candy. 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 Beyond the clouds, the moon is smiling down on you tonight. 
Prism employed an interesting strategy to get off onto the best possible start. The CEO, Captain, was well connected with the Japanese VTuber scene and was able to employ some very high profile VTuber illustrators who had done work on many famous and well established VTubers and were regarded as among the best. Prism talent Iku Hoshifuri is made by Nyori. Luto Araka, made by Nacho Neko, perhaps most famous for Gorgura. And Yura Rikudo has the same character designer as Kason and Kiria Koko. The top illustrators and riggers have a colossal amount of eyes on them, since everyone wants to commission their works, and artists and riggers probably display their works on Twitter during the production process. Iku, Luto and Yura were able to gain hype and attention as people were excited to see the work in action and in Yura's case they even allowed her to access Kason's Minecraft and Ark servers. Some of their VTubers such as Shiki Miyashino of Generation 3 even managed to go viral with excellently produced short form videos, one of the earliest such cases as seen here. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! Almost 1 million views as of 2024, so across the board Prism was off to a fantastic start. It didn't get there first, but definitely a few months ahead of the rest, and it looked like it was doing everything right, the growth was good. In order for an agency to succeed, the founder and CEO needs to be as passionate as the VTubers themselves. Success is a two-way street, both VTuber and management together need to develop and build that path to achieve the vision. If the management sucks, it also sucks the life out of the talents and everything becomes worse and worse as time goes on. In Prism's case, it's clear that from early on, the whole team was very active, lots of projects, energy, motivation to make something special. You you can really see the passion and desire to succeed in the early days. This wasn't just a poorly thought out corporate cash grab. Despite the initial growth of the company, things eventually started to slow down later in the year, particularly as Niji Sanju EN came online. Competitors like V Shoujo and Hololive skyrocketed to unprecedented success and the market became more and more saturated. CEO Captain felt that the company couldn't fully embrace new technology challenges or venture into music production as desired. Therefore he met with the team pushing conglomerate giant Sony. This led to Prism Project's partnership with Sony Music Entertainment on the 1st of May 2022, a subsidiary of the Sony Music Group, the second largest music company in the world. Now, I tell you what, I like you and I want you. Now we can do this the easy way or we can do it the hard way. Sony Music Entertainment would be the main manager and producer of Prism Project, meaning Captain would move on to the advisory role. Unfortunately, on the same day of this transition, Captain left his position as producer of Prison Project and was replaced by a new producer known as Shogun. Sony also announced that Prism YouTube channels would be moving to a new multi-channel network. The talents themselves were signed to a Sony Music Talent Management contract. This would mark the last major organisational change in PRISM. They would not debut more waves of VTubers until 2023, which saw the creation of Generation 5, Generation 6, a wave of two male VTubers, which marks the first, and Generation 7, which marked three independent VTubers coming into PRISM, who were able to keep their IP and characters. In the next section, we're going to go into more detail on PRISM's agents themselves. Before I go into the agents proper, let's go over the spirit and culture. Prism has a great mix of persona and character style VTubers. Some agents are complete characters and most likely do not represent the real person behind the VTuber in any way. But you also have a fair share of agents who really let their real personalities and tastes 
bleed through the performance. Regardless of what VTuber type of Prism agent is, the community engagement is top notch. They respond to tweets, support, fan art and chat messages quite quickly. They really do go above and beyond despite massive followings. One thing you'll immediately notice is how tight of a unit they are. They really do look out for each other. Despite the termination of the agency, Prism's agents are making a concentrated effort to remain friends and network with their gen mates and colleagues. This speaks volumes of the moral character of its agents, I think. They're very friendly, lovely personalities. Some are very down to earth and mature. Others can be very silly, weird, cringe or crazy, as we'd expect from VTubers. They take their mission statement of positivity very seriously. No politics, no drama. They try to stick to an atmosphere of friendliness and fun. They're a great bunch to watch or lurk with if you're looking for more social engagement. Many of its agents have a non-meta content style. It's definitely not for everyone, but I find it to be a nice palette cleanser from the Menhera, filth and super high energy goblin behaviour that's becoming increasingly prevalent in ENV tubing. You can really see the creativity, passion and artistry. It's not all about gaming, screaming and outrageous behaviour. There's so much original music too. I don't know whether it's the power of the Sony Music Group or that incredible work ethic they have. Maybe a bit of both. Prism's agents have invested so much time and effort into diversifying their content and becoming competent in many different things in the traditions of idol style VTubing. From karaoke, covers, original music, drawing, art, roleplay, gaming sessions, community driven content and zatsy dance. No matter what your tastes are, there's bound to be someone in Prism to your taste. Since I have 18 active VTubers and I've only been watching since November, I'm not the best source to get an in-depth take on each one yet. I'll give a brief overview as best I can for each generation. Unfortunately, I'm not going to talk about the graduated talents, I'm just going to focus on the ones who are active going forwards. So, let's start with Generation 1. <laughs> So first off, we've got Iku Hoshifuri, an alien from another planet. She's often referred to as Hime. She has a close relationship with her fellow gen mates, kind of seen as the mum of the group. She has some great drawing streams. We want underboob. You know what? Might as well. We're being spicy today. She's also very into collaborations and hosts many collabs on her channel. Her streaming content is very diverse. There's video games, singing. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, she's a very chill and lovely person. So, next up, we've got Aoi Tokimori, a timekeeping fox, but she's jokingly referred to as a cat. She plays Hollow Knight, puzzle games, does karaoke. She loves nuggies for some reason, and is an incredible singer. <laughs> Aoi does a lot of chatting streams and work with me streams. The highlights of this stuff is she really likes horror films and has a lot of great taste. She wants to be a movie snob. She can talk a lot about many different things for hours and keep it interesting. She has a great sense of humor. You browse categories on Twitch. That's true. I, I find myself browsing categories on Twitch, opening a stream, realizing I don't watch streams and closing them. <laughs> I'm too much, I have too much Zoomer brain, you guys, like, and especially because, of, like, I don't have YouTube premium or anything, so I have to close YouTube in order to do anything else. I can't, like, leave it on. So that's why it's really hard for me to watch streams, um, unless I'm on my computer. 
and I can do things at the same time because I have just I, my Zoomer brain, my ADHD Zoomer brain is too real. She used to play a lot of rhythm games in the past and might get back into it. She also streams trying to learn French overall, an incredible singer, great talker with interesting stories and opinions on things. And finally, for Generation 1, we've got Meno Ibuki. Meno's voice is very soft and quiet. She refers to herself in the third person and she's very shy. She really enjoys doing mystery streams, stories and puzzles involving her audience as well. She also does a wide variety of games including Planet Zoo, which is based as hell. Good work! Yay. Remember. Overall, she's incredibly cute. And that's your Generation 1, let's move on to Generation 2. Generation 2 seems to have a theme of heaven and hell going on. You've got Kamishiro Rita, the angel, and Araka Luto, the demon. If we start off with Rita Kamishiro, she's a cyber angel. I really like her design. There's just something about that little headset microphone that is absolutely brilliant. She has a great vocal range and the ability to control her voice, making her proficient at voice acting. Dad, he could ask me questions about myself. He might sit too close or call the waiter by his first name or eat Oreos and eat the cookie before the cream but what scares me the most what scares me the most is what if when he sees me what if he doesn't like it what if he runs the other way and I can't hide from it what happens then as you'd expect another fantastic singer and can do damn near any kind of genre of music really. She plays a lot of RPG games, especially JRPGs. She's done Xenoblade Chronicles and Mass Effect. Do I ship anyone in Ruby? I wish that Blake and Yang had a more organic um, romance development. I, I think they, they, they're cute, but I think their story would be a lot more compelling if because it felt like they were really trying to push for Blake and Son. <laughs> Karaoke and just chatting too. She can even play the viola and the ukulele. She streams her practice sessions. Overall, extremely say-so, won't swear, very lovely, super positive and uplifting, with fantastic community engagement. Ruto Raka is a half-demon, half-human devil. She laughs a bit like a seagull. I'm gonna hit a... <laughs> I don't know how to fly fucking Mundo. Help! <laughs> I am... I am trolling. Help! How do I play this game? Wait, why is she heal? Why are they healing so much? She's very chatty and a bit unsay so to put it mildly. A bit yabai, quite menhera. No, just uh, isn't a fucking wife. She is my actual fucking wife. All right, uh, there's a difference between a wife and a wife. That's right. Y'all getting your animes and your fucking reality is mixed up, and I don't like that. Y'all need to get your fucking brain checked, okay? She mostly streams video games, but she also does karaoke and drawing. Overall, she's full of energy. She's very chaotic, a bit of a menace, but great fun. So let's move on to Generation Three. This not a dream, yeah. Don't take a bite, yeah. I bloody love Generation 3's original song, Prismatic Dream. I'm not ashamed to admit, as a grown ass man, I've had this on repeat non stop for the last three days. <laughs> Generation 3's theme is East Meets West. You've got Miyoshino Shiki and Suzune Nia, and Inugami and Nakomata, respectively. Meeting Pina Penjin, a harpy penguin, and Rikudo Yura, a Dullahan. So let's start with Shiki. Everybody likes Shiki. She's an idol and someone you might consider to be the poster girl of Prism. She has an occult theme and loves playing horror games and doing horoscopes for chat. 
She's really into her horror movies and enjoys grieving. Every year, she grieves over the unfortunate passing away of her grandma shortly before she got accepted into Prison Project. There's a meme about Shiki Doo because she once mistook a bottle of Mountain Dew filled with her own urine as actual Mountain Dew. I'm surprised she noticed a difference, honestly, since the real thing does taste like piss. Anyway, Shiki is a powerhouse, famous for her songs and covers. Another fantastic singer. Just one more time. Lots of ASMR content, gaming, cozy just chatting streams, and drawing Zatsudans. Do this alone. Till I will if I must. I brought you a snack. Veronica? <laughs> Overall, Shiki's very pleasant, she's very friendly, a great all-rounder with a wide variety of content, very weeby, and I mean that in a good way. You can tell she genuinely loves Japanese and VTubing culture, and she's fantastic with her community and her colleagues. Nia Suzune is a VTuber I really enjoy, a cat shrine maiden who heads a criminal organisation called the Catnip Cartel. Her fans are known as the Catnip Cartel, as they're supposed to help her build her catnip empire. She plays games and likes to zatsadan a lot. She plays a lot of first person shooters, such as Fortnite. I knocked one. Knocked the other. <sighs> okay. She plays Power World, Modern Warfare, Helldivers 2. Oh, you guys! Oh, shit! Ah! <laughs> I don't know where to go. I'm so confused. I'm so confused! I don't know where I'm going! She does karaoke streams and is another wonderful singer. Breaking crowds, half an hour, the scrapping truth. You stay in crowd, but that thinking is flat there too. A lively beat keeps the time till a class no I really like her personality. It's hard to explain. She's like a normal sort of down to earth woman, but she's also a bit of a gamer bro. I think if you're really into gaming yourself, you'll find her quite relatable and enjoyable to watch. She's quite funny. If you enjoy regular Twitch gaming, Nia is a great bridging VTuber. You could use her to ease people into the VTubing hobby. I find her regular streaming and gaming sessions to be consistently enjoyable. I like her character and I really enjoy her music. Pina Penkin is very say-so and very lovely. Naughty jokes and references just go whoosh since she's a big ball of sunshine and a complete cinnamon roll. I must be Bitcoin because I keep falling for you. You must be a parking ticket, because you've got fine written all over you. <laughs> it cringe. She really is a delight to watch, and her reactions to things are funny to behold. <laughs> oh yeah, let's go. She's idol-like and multi-talented, with a lot of collaborations with other VTubers. She enjoys Zatsy Dance and karaoke. In addition to the wonderful music, her dedication to chat and fans, both in stream and on Twitter, goes above and beyond many other VTubers out there. Overall, just a lovely, fun and wholesome VTuber. Yura Rikido is an incredibly hardworking VTuber, much respect for this one. A big variety streamer in terms of content and the types of games she plays. She has gaming. Gunpla, building Minecraft on the Kason server. Multi-talented, she's yet another brilliant singer and she can play the guitar as she sings. Her personality is quite extroverted and confident, but she can be silly and a bit of a goofball. Okay, 
Like, is this far enough? I'm just gonna try, okay? I already saved. <laughs> okay! Okay, that is very far! Got it! Understand! She did a drawing stream of her favorite Afron X Kagali moments from Gundam Seed, the weirdo. <laughs> this is when the first time that they met. Uh, but, uh, okay, I already like Kagali when I first saw her, and I already like Astran when I first saw her. So when they two finally met, it was perfect for me because I like both characters. They were both my favorite characters. They were both my number ones. Astran likes Kagali because she looks like you are- No! Don't say that! <laughs> she can't handle horror well, which is always funny. She enjoys talking about mostly anything, really. Whether it be serious, mundane, or even life stories during streams. She's a very caring person and makes it a point to always remind her viewers to take care of themselves and put themselves first before her. Overall, another lovely person and fun to just participate or lurk with. So, let's move on to Generation 4. Generation 4's theme is one of fairy tales. We've got Little Red Riding Hood, The Little Mermaid, 1001 Nights, and Alice in Wonderland. So in order of the fairy tales, let's start with Kamizuki Naki. As far as I'm aware, she's unfortunately going on an indefinite hiatus in April 2024. But if you do like her content, please make sure you reach out to her and let her know that you do appreciate her stuff. She's a bit of a mix of Yabai and Chill. She's quite close to Gen Mate Non Anon, and they hang out with each other and collab quite a bit. Lots of ASMR, chatting, and RP style content if that's your thing. It seems pointless to keep repeating this. You are probably not surprised to hear she's another brilliant singer. She's quite cute and a little bit silly with a fun sense of humor. So I love it outside. Yeah. She's stupid. Hey. She's also pretty good at games. Oh, I got it. Oh my God. What am I, a genius? <laughs> Holy shit. Let's fucking go. She's played some Cuphead recently and made a good go at that, despite being a VTuber. If Naki catches your interest, her streams of Valheim with Non and Non are a good start, I think. Overall, she's silly, cute, fun. So if you like VTubers who use their voice primarily for entertainment, she's definitely one for you. Next up, we've got Sarah Nagare, one who I'm really enjoying at the moment. She's from Bloody Oz, mate. Day in the life of a true Aussie cunt. Wake up, punch the wife. Yet another great singer, like everyone else in Prism. What I love about Sarah is her chill and down-to-earth personality that can range into complete menhera, but also has a very wacky and silly side to her. She gradually loses her sanity and gets frustrated when playing difficult games, particularly when she's playing something like Cuphead or Elden Ring. Do I do it? Oh! <laughs> I think people from the UK or the Commonwealth will appreciate her sense of humour most. It's very colonial. Okay, alright, 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 we can do this, we can do this, we can do this. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? L-M-A and might I add O, mm, definitely. She enjoys playing city builders like City Skylines and Tropico. 
which is quite rare in VTubing. But she's also a big variety streamer. You can expect ASMR, karaoke and Zatsidan streams. Overall, great game choices, fantastic at manipulating her voice for entertainment, and a wonderful sense of humour that will tickle the British and people who are looking for a silly but coolly understated streamer. Now we've got Nononon, a Benoi VTuber. I love her name and I love the design, both very cool. Anon can be quite chaotic and she's had a bad habit of accidentally eating expired and mouldy food from her fridge, making her sick. Reminds you of someone? Nononon is a meme lord, she's very sassy, and she's got a bit of an opinion, which I quite like. One thing she's done together with Iko Hoshifuri is create a silly original short series. <laughs> Wait, wrong timeline. It's bizarre, but very funny. I like how outside the box Prison Project's VTubers can be. Much better. When they were at their peaks in high school. Oh my god, like, tonally. Iku enjoys tax evasion and BL in that order. Like, yes, girl! Non likes twerking and spitting on babies. The order is not important. Recently, she's even had her own original song produced. So overall, you never know what to expect with Non and Non really. She can be a calm, chill and cosy VTuber, or a bit of a complete shitposting, memeing menace. A very funny VTuber. So if we move on to Generation 5, we now move on to weather-based VTubers. <laughs> Let's start off with Generation 5 Subame Ko, who represents Thunderstorms. Unfortunately, Ko has graduated with the closure of Prison Project. However, you can still check her content out, and she's still somewhat active on Twitter. So if you do really enjoy it, reach out to her, let her know, show her some support, and maybe she'll come back. Who knows? Let's start off with her original song, Reborn Again. I don't need a new mind to be fine. I don't need a new car to shine bright. Clocking all my cycles, thinking what am I inside? I love the instrumentation in this one, it goes super hard. It's one of my favourite among the original songs produced thus far. Ko's voice is brilliant, she has such a rich, deep, mature voice. The two aspects complement each other perfectly. Sometimes with VTuber songs, the instrumentation can drown out the vocals, or maybe the vocals don't really fit the theme of the song, but in this case, I think it's perfect. Ko herself is a variety streamer like the rest. She has hand can streams where she's building Lego. Playing games such as Hollow Knight, just chatting streams. I, I think it's a red flag if men don't, like, refuse to have a skincare routine. I think that more men need to be willing to moisturize. Not enough men are taking proper care of their, of their skin health. Um, I will change that. I can fix you. Because one day, you're gonna wake up, boom, 40 years passed but it looks like 60 did. You aged like, like $5 wine when you could have aged like $80 wine, you know? She's another VTuber who's quite confident and strongly opinionated. So overall, if you like streamers with strong personalities and you like active engagement with the chat, she's one for you. And then next up, we've got Ami Amami, another VTuber I'm quite fond of. Ami has huge idle energy. She's very cute, very friendly, full of energy. If you prefer louder and chattier VTubers, she's a great pick. Yeah, Ami Ami's not a picky eater, though I will say, I got bullied in preschool for being a picky eater. Because sometimes, I like, didn't want to eat whatever the snack was that they gave us during the day. And I like, tried to give it to some of my classmates instead. I was like, oh, I'm not that hungry. You can have this. And then the, like, the kids in the classroom started making fun of me for being a picky eater. And then they punched me in the eye. Can you believe it in preschool? 
Personally, I enjoy her gameplay streams the most. She's able to play games to a good ability whilst also reacting between what's going on in game and engaging with the chat, so there's very little dead air. I showed you my skizzin booch. Please respond, chat. Would you respond to me if I showed you my schism booch? She plays everything from horror games to cute and cozy games like Minecraft. As you'd expect from an idol VTuber, her songs are happy, airy, upbeat, and lovely. As seen in her original song, Drops of Sunshine. Overall, I'd say she's very idol-like, lovely, well-rounded, and a natural entertainer. So let's move on to Generation 6, the male VTuber wave. Theme of Generation 6 is men. The preceding joke was brought to you by men. Men, we don't know what we did. There were two male VTubers in this wave, unfortunately one left due to personal reasons, just leaving poor pirate Junakane on his own. Look at him, Billy no makes Junakane, ha <laughs> look at him, all by himself with all these anime women. You motherfucker. No, I'm just kidding. I like Jun, Jun is a lovely guy, he's always so positive and full of energy. Bit of a goofball, but very talkative and fantastic with community engagement. What the fuck is that? Christ almighty! You foul demon! Be gone, thought! He's a hard worker, not quite at the idol stage yet, but he's really putting the work in, you love to see it. He's a very competitive gamer type. He plays League of Legends, Tekken, Apex Legends, Counter-Strike, and he plays this with his viewer base from time to time. Another VTuber where if you're really into gaming and first person shooters, he's a great choice to watch. Now we move on to the final generation, Generation 7. Generation 7 is an interesting wave. You may consider it to be the phase invaders of Prison Project, as all three were independent VTubers coming in. Their theme is the colour blue, the blue girl group. Let's start with Umiya Emma. Oh my god, it's Umiya Emma. I used to be a Cyberlife fan back in the day. <laughs> Shame to see it happen again, sorry Emma. <laughs> Emma is a bit of a lewd tuber, I think it'd be fair to say. There's a lot of ASMR and role-playing based content, and spread in between this, she'll be playing popular games such as Hell of the Divers 2, Gacha Games and Power World. I think her greatest strengths are in her acting abilities and voice work. She's quite funny with a sometimes silly sense of humour. She has a lot of bait and switch style humour, so you can't really tell if she is going to be lewd or if she's going to hit you with a clever joke. She's also a great character actress. Emma is absolutely fantastic with her community on stream as well as in the Twitters and the comments section. Despite some of the lewd content, there's a fun side to her as well. I really like her singing. I particularly like her high notes and the voice. A goal of hers is to release her own original song. <laughs> Next up, we've got Mako Samashima. I quite like Mako. She's recently released her second original song called When I Let Go, and it's absolutely incredible. I mean, check this out. Seriously, go watch the entire thing. The instrumentation, the lyrics, the vocals, the emotion, just the whole package is amazing. Mako is another tuber with a cracking personality. She's very lovely, can be a silly goofball. <laughs> um, hello? You're so right, check this out. 
<laughs> Fucking weirdo. <laughs> That's funny. Great sense of humour, and she's another hard worker. Very active and streams a lot. She does everything from gaming, ASMR, just chatting streams and karaoke. And then finally, we've got Nana Asteria, another Australian VTuber. Touch that fucking song, cut and I'll smash ya! And yet another incredible songstress with some great songwriting abilities. She's got three original songs and they're very emotional, very powerful. Kind of like it belongs in a tragedy almost. I love her music. I would strongly recommend that you start off with Call Unto You. Time draws near, yet it fades, here appears, what we've made, how wish will turn into these stars in the end. I'll make a call again, I call unto you again, to Nana's content is primarily based around her singing ability, but she does just chatting streams, fun collab streams with the other prism agents in Among Us, Lethal Company or Maid Cafe type of stuff. I think it's fair to say she's another big idol VTuber, and her personality is very bubbly, wacky, weird and friendly. She's a lot of fun. Wait, this is not the express train. Where am I? Who am I? Not another one. <gasps> Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! Sorry, sorry, I'll stay in my seat. Sorry, sorry, Come keep talking. And that's Prison Project's VTubers. They're very determined, tough, and passionate about VTubing. You can see the pride in the effort they put in their work. I think they're criminally underrated. Regardless, they keep going, focused on delivering some quality content. I know you can't help liking what you like, their content style may not be for you, but go check out Prism's VTubers, lads. I really think they are model VTubers. It's a high quality product, you won't be disappointed. If you want to watch clips of Prism's talents, I know of these channels. Apologies if there are any more. Uh, please recommend them in the comments. We've got Say So Potato, VT Archiver, and Al's VTuber clips. Hello, the Plague Doctor is in. Have you tried using leeches to draw out the bad blood? Put some lavender and pleasant smelling herbs to keep the bad air out? So let's go over why Prism is closing again. Contrary to speculation from the VTubing community, it doesn't look like it was just a case of Sony Music Entertainment bad. The lead producer placed by Sony, called Shogun, has stated their thoughts and plans for Prism on the Reddit Ask Me Anythings and on social media. In these statements, it looks like they actually did somewhat care about the future of the company and quite liked Prism's agents. Looking at the statement by Shogun, particularly the part around a mutual agreement and growth, it seems most likely that the company was no longer able to give the agents what they wanted to make the contracts worthwhile. And for Sony, it's probably not profitable enough for them to continue operations, even if it is Shogun's passion project. Remember, this is a Japanese-based company and Japanese copyright law is fucked. And you need permission to stream certain video games or else you get sued. What the fuck's that? What the fuck is that? Capcom and Nintendo are examples of this. Ice fuckery! I'm really excited to play a lot more games. I, I hope that you guys are ready for my Persona 4 brain rot. <laughs> and I'm I'm very excited for those things specifically. There will be, I guess, like a few more uh, streams like that are a little a little different, but they're in the same vein. They've gone after Hololive and their games are all the rage these days, which will inevitably affect the content possibility of Prism's agents. If they go independent, they don't have to worry about this anymore. 
In addition, Prism would have probably closed much earlier without Sony's resources and they would not have been able to produce as much music and other milestones outside of its original reach without their help. That said, let's try to deconstruct some of the weaknesses of Prism to see where it could have improved. I would say the key issues were marketing and the industry trends. Before Sony Music took over, Prism Project recognised very quickly how Clippers would be able to generate interest and promote the agents. They even ran the hashtag Prism Clips Awards in June to July 2021 with a $3,000 prize pool. This actually worked for a while. Prism got the notice of Clipper Skidshammer, who at the time was gaining hundreds of thousands of views on his Hololive and Niji Sanji clips. Wanting some of that sweet prize money, he was able to consistently get around about 40 to 50k views a clip on Prism's VTubers, bringing interest their way. Now that's incredibly impressive numbers for 2021. Unfortunately, by November of 2021, the Clipper interest died down and even poor Skidshama themselves were no longer able to achieve the attention they used to. Although Prism still had some active Clippers, none were able to achieve the strength of Skidshama. Although Shiki was able to gain much interest through her production of highly successful short form videos, the agency at large were slow to adopt this strategy and you started to see the bigger agencies and independents dominating the YouTube algorithm. There was no further big push on the corporate side to get large VTuber clippers sponsoring their content. Now you can't make fan clippers appear and harvest your highlights obviously, but you can reach out and incentivize the big clipping channels into pushing your agency's content. You could also pay non-VTubing content creators who are adjacent to VTubing like Nags or Co to watch and react to your work. It's not like Sony Music outright did not market the agency. Prism co-hosted alongside Crunchyroll Hime at Crunchyroll Expo 2022. In 2023, Prism released a tower defense game called Prism Portal Panic. The agents attended many conventions too, but when you think about it, that's kind of weak really, given the immense resources at Sony Music's disposal. Prism agents themselves were able to achieve collaborations with Niji Sanji EN to get their names out there, and this probably did more to accomplish interest. I don't think churning out wave after wave of new talents helped things either. The problem with churning out waves and waves of new VTubers in a short period of time is that you run the risk of fatiguing the existing fanbase who don't want to get invested in yet another talent so soon and it's no longer a special occasion. On a personal level, I'm glad they did do this because otherwise I probably wouldn't have been able to enjoy the VTubers who filled that role. Unfortunately, I think Prism has almost been too clean and too stable to attract a lot of notice. They've kept their heads down and worked really hard, but there's just so much to watch out there. New people and organisations debuting every month. Many people have already settled into their major content providers. You really need something to rip them away from it. Prism has the identity of positivity and wholesomeness. But it's not really enough as an organisation to make it big in Western VTubing, it's quite niche. The permissions issue and strategic direction from Japanese business professionals who maybe don't quite understand or have a grasp of Western VTubing consumer habits probably hasn't helped things either. So let's compare it to other VTuber organisations. You've got Phase Connect, which is known as the Coffee and Manhara Company, the Sad Girl Company with the crazy, filthy, degenerate women who say outrageous things. They've got spicy form of content. They've even got Majon as a quasi-meme. Phase Connect is full of memes. It's had more than its fair share of controversies, which has put people off it. But ultimately, being in the news and being talked about by the major VTubing commentary channels, even if it is drama, is good for business. Whether you hate or love Face Connect, it's very easy to identify the brand and describe what to expect. It's unique, weird, and it draws people in. The CEO himself is a huge meme and beloved by the VTubing community. You've got Hololive with its own incredible music production, countless 3D concerts and events, so many iconic VTubers setting trends and seen by many as having the cutest VTubers in the world. It's the organisation of perfect idols and the CEO himself has a great reputation in the VTubing community and is himself a little bit of a meme. I will not talk about Niji Sanji because it leads to excessive shit posting on my part and I'm trying to be a serious VTuber commentary channel. 
Sometimes. Then you have V Shoujo with its silly, goofy, lewd, and charismatic VTubers. Kind of a corpo, but considerably more free. It's more of an association of independent VTubers. They play all the latest and most popular games. They have an incredible network of affiliations with other popular content creators, both in and out of the VTubing sphere. It's also somewhat of a controversial corpo that often makes the VTubing news. Stay with In the end, even though Prison Project is closing, its spirit will probably live on in the VTubers who, no doubt, will be going through a scary and uncertain future as they transition to independence. If you're interested, give them some support. I do think they're criminally underrated. There's a remarkable amount of talent. They're dedicated to their craft. It's a very high quality product. You can tell they're in VTubing for the right reasons. They seriously care about your entertainment, their colleagues' well-being, being the best entertainer they can be. Prison Project's VTubers are pretty special and worth preserving. I feel it would be tragic to lose their outlook and culture. Prism is a mood, there's some lovely and thoughtful entertainers doing their best, they might surprise you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to continue jamming to their music. Can someone call 911? I literally can't stop listening to this song. 